Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. Today we are going to create a page full of vintagey goodness. I want you to count how many layers it takes to create that vintage background. I am going to be using this napkin on this page. Yep, there is no deer on this because I cut it off. And that left me with this beautiful rose border. So I challenge you to open up your napkins and look for a part that you could turn into a border that you could put on an art journal page like I did here. So let's get to making a vintage background. Now we want soft muted colors, a bit of grunge and we want lots of layers. So to start off with, and the first layer, the base coat, I am using unbleached titanium and white gesso, and I'm applying that to the open space with a makeup sponge. Here I'm taking a brush and just getting it, kind of dabbing it to soften the edges of where the napkin ends and the page begins, just to meld that out a little bit. I don't want this perfectly smooth. In fact, I want some variation. Anything you can do here is just going to add to the yumminess and the grunge part. And you'll notice that that color is in the napkin. It's on that row on the roses. So once that's completely dry, I have this stencil from TCW. It's called Hand Cup Blossom. And I'm using the unbleached titanium straight up, no mixing it with the white gesso, and I'm stenciling it on. This is giving that lacy feel. You think vintage, you think lace. And I'm just going to go across the entire background. Are you remembering to count how many layers it takes to make a vintage background? Now these makeup sponges, I just get from the Dollar Tree. They're very inexpensive. They're more of a latex, they're not very porous. They do have two different kinds. This is the kind I prefer, and I just throw them in water and I wash them and I reuse them again and again. Now look at that lacy, beautiful, mm. And quite honestly, when I started this, I thought, okay, I'm just gonna do this and then I'll go to my focal image. But where's the fun in that? I wanted to introduce some of that pink into the background, but I wanted it more subdued. So I'm mixing light magenta with the unbleached titanium. And then I'm stamping with this wooden, wooden block stamp. It's just a flower stamp. So I'm bringing in the floral to this. And, you know, as usual, I'm getting carried away. I stop and then I add more and it is a field of flowers. I want to continue that vintage and one thing that's really says vintage is lots of times script and I loved my script stamps. Here I'm using sepia archival ink, building that grunge and, and uh, vintage feel. Now I'm thinking maybe I'm done with the background but I wanted to change the tone of the green, make it more muted, more vintage. It, it was reading almost a teal green and I didn't like that. So I brought up my Inktense blocks and I'm just doing a wash of color over top of it. Very watercolory look. Now you could have overpainted the roses as well, but roses I find are really difficult to overpaint and I just chose to leave them alone. Still unsure if I'm done with that background, I grab my woodless charcoal pencil. This one is a medium. And then I'm grabbing the soft. The soft one blends a lot better. It's softer, of course, and it's easier to smudge. And I like that vintage type feel. that this gives. So this art journal page was very quick and easy. It took me under 
30 minutes to do because of course the borders the roses that's been done for months it's just been sitting waiting for me to finish it so as a focal image i decided to use one of my julie netting dolls and when i do bring out the stamp platform i stamp multiples and maybe i'll cut them out and those are in the stash and that's what you see me grabbing here i don't have to put grab out the ink or my stamping platform every single time that i want to stamp and again it speeds up that creative pro process for me now i had one girl in there that i had finished for another project and i like the green on that so i'm going to kind of duplicate that i'm painting with the naples yellow and the hooker's green and then i grab this screen view stencil and i'm making those checks just to make it the dress give it some pattern and some pizzazz and i use the naples yellow because again that is a muted color and that goes with vintage vintage you want muted so you want to add some gray add some naples yellow add some something that's just going to dull it down just that little bit. You don't want vibrant colors. There's a little bit of that yellow in the roses and that's what I chose to use for her hair. And here I'm just dulling it down by putting a little bit of a wash of brown. Now this was copy paper that I had stamped on and I did give it a coat of clear gesso. This is something that I've just started doing using clear gesso on my printables or stamped images that I do just on copy paper. It gives it a little bit of substance and it helps take the medium just all the better. I mix up a flesh tone here just with the, I have the light magenta, the Naples yellow and a little bit of the white gesso. Oh, I'm loving how that girl, that green dress just really works well with the green in the roses. I'm just going to glue that down with some gel medium. And of course I will be giving that a complete dry before I move to the next stage. And the next one is to shade the focal image. So I'm going with brown around the outside and then you're going to see me grabbing some black and going on the outside and then uh, on the dress and in the hair to shade the girl. Having a coat of matte medium has made it a non-porous surface. So just adding the shading to add the details, the folds of the dress. It's this little thing, but it adds so much. Now, as I'm doing this, I'm thinking that the pink flowers that I stamped are a little bit more forward than I want. They're the last thing that I stamped pretty much on there. And I wasn't quite happy with that. So I grabbed that stamp again and I have thick gesso here and I'm stamping with the white thick gesso which is giving a little bit of texture but it's neutralizing the background somewhat and lightening it and subduing the pink so the pink and the roses pops a lot more. So while that's drying, I'm looking for a sentiment and I go to my Grateful, Thankful, Blessed sentiment pack. And there's a link in the description box if you're looking for sentiments. And I'm choosing two here. I've sized it for the page and I'm just going to addition both of them on the page to better make a decision. And I went with my first thought, 
take the time to stop and smell the roses. I'm gluing that down with fluid matte medium. And this time, instead of cutting apart the sentiment, I've left it whole. I think there's a big space there. But I am going to shade with brown and then black around it just to make it fit the vintage feel of the page. So how many layers did you count in the background? Put your answer in the comment section below. Give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video and want to see more. Until next time, go get creative. Pictures of the final project follow as soon as I get done.